says, thank you for the super chat, by the way. Yeah, uh, Derek preferred only because of its target curve question mark. Mm. I think I mean, there's probably more important. to Dirac that people like. If you're asking why do people prefer it, is that what he's saying? Right. Yeah, why why do I recommend it? How about that? I can say I recommend it for people because I think it does a good job of the things that maybe some of the other ones don't do as well, which is, you know, I think all of them can pretty much do time alignment, distance, uh, distance. So that's distance based levels, right? Get mm -hmm. about the same levels. Those are basic things. Actually, Odyssey didn't use to. I don't know if it still does, mm -hmm. but it. Mis kind of miscalculated the the distance a little bit. <laughs> Not sure if they fixed that yet. Mine thought um, it was pretty accurate on distance. Uh, it had a error in the calculation of uh, you know if you use their you know if you plug directly into the AVR, but if you use multi QX, it does it correctly. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's kind of a weird thing. But anyway, I never had issue. Yeah, I mean it. It really is like I don't know if it's a it's a known thing. It, yeah. it miscalculates it. So. Um, Dirac did it correctly, and it does something extra in that it does phase alignment. All right, so I don't know that the other ones necessarily do that. I'm pretty sure that Odyssey does not do it in the same way that they do it, which is using, so Junior OG says here, impulse correction. So impulse response gives you phase information that you can use to align the phase within the speaker itself, right? So if there's a crossover, it does something weird, can kind of try to correct that, oh, but it's also helpful in uh, summing your main speakers with the subwoofer. So you can time align them, but it doesn't mean that they're going to have the same slope and have good summation at the crossover point. And so I think Dirac has done a good job of all those things, you know, that I think are kind of like basic things that every everything should do. Um, as far as the target curve, that's actually... I've had the guys over, you know. I've had Nilo, was the former CEO and one of the founders of Dirac. Him and uh, Barack, their senior engineer, they were here for four hours, I think, so three or four hours. And, you know, my thing that I kept telling them is, I think you could do a better job of the target curve. So this is exactly what I said earlier. And, um, yeah, I've, I think before they used to have a downward sloping curve. I don't know. how to. How did you do it? I, yeah, it's, it's I, back. I gotta get that. What you say? Is that the right direction? No, that's not. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, it was just a downward sloping line for the most part. That was their target curve for a long time. Mm -hmm. Now their new target curve is based on the response that it's measuring. So if the base is up a little bit, it kind of says, all right, this is the starting point and the trouble is down. Okay, this is the starting point. Now do you want to move it up or down from here? All right. I think that's a good idea. I think that's better than what they used to do. But still... I think there's still room for improvement, right? But I think it's way better uh, starting point. Um, the other ones, yeah, I think Odyssey, I think they use a modified version of the X curve, which I would not recommend. I, I would not recommend that for anybody. Um, if if the default was something like a Harman target, like we mentioned earlier, I think that's a decent starting point, but still not correct. Uh, it's just less wrong than some of the other ones. I think that's the... The point is less wrong is not the same as correct. So would you, uh, yeah, I don't, so answer is no. I don't recommend it because of its target curve. I recommend it because of all the other things that it does correctly. Yeah. Anybody else? I would say that I put those kind of systems into bins with each other. Um, if you, I, I consider there kind of be three, three layers of that, right? And they get better based on the complexity of the algorithms and the sophistication of the code in terms of both what it's calculating and doing and then the devices that it's going into to apply that stuff. And so, you know, Odyssey or base Odyssey before they did the couple hundred dollar, you know, more, more powered version at least and Yamaha, YPOW, those kind of fit into the one, one echelon. And then I think like Dirac, Anthemark, maybe like, like is it, uh, Lindorf, there's, there's a few other more proprietary ones are kind of in the, the next up, you know, next level up. And then, then you're into storm and, Trin off territory and whatever, and so. Well, Storm yeah. uses Dirac, right? I thought they did a little more though. Like they're. they're... They have base control, Dirac Live base mm -hmm. control. Okay. Uh, but so like HTP one, I think they kind of have this a similar. Uh, Dirac there. Hmm. 
I think you know it's funny. I watched your video when you're doing the the Trinov one, and I think you mentioned like, why is this taking so long? I'm using this new <laughs> this new M1 or uh, Mac. Why is this processing taking so long? And uh, I just thought that was kind of funny because it's true. Like this thing is super powerful, mm. and I think a lot of these room corrections you were talking about how um, you know it's based on processing power also, but a lot of them are kind of like static. Like they just they run it once, and it's not doing anything dynamic. It's it doesn't require. Um, I guess. Let me let me make sure I'm saying the right thing. Kind of setting the parameters and a lot of that, no matter what content's coming in. A lot of folks use uh, their computer with like multi, uh, not multi optimizer. What is a equalizer APO? Something like that, where they can run uh, crazy filters. What's the mm. filter that's hard to do, Aaron? Um, uh, Maybe it, all pass or something? Or uh, quad? Infinite impulse response is the one that's harder. To oh, yeah. Of. IIR? Yeah, yeah. That's the one that's harder to do because, you know. So I'm always basically, flip-flopped, but I'll go with your vote on that one. Yeah. yeah. I, can, I can never remember which one is which. Yeah. So a lot, of, a lot of dudes like to do stuff like that where they're not just doing equalization, but they're kind of using convolution to fix the response and that's processor intensive. You need a computer to be able to do that. So maybe, you know, Trinov is actually a computer. Oh, um, it is, yeah. 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 That's right. You know, actually you bring up a good point too. And I, again, I can't remember which one is which, but Dirac uses like one for low frequency and the other mm -hmm. for higher frequency. So it yeah. appropriately like allocates the memory and uses the better one appropriately, I guess. <laughs> Oh, man, what a character. Um, so somebody else said, thank you for staying on topic. And it's because Chana's not here. That's why. It's somewhat on topic. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but yeah, uh, where were we? Oh, yeah, we are talking about um, uh, Dirac using different version FIR and, and uh, infinite impulse response for different parts. And I think it's the base that requires the most processing power because they're trying to do, like, you know, real... Uh, they're trying to be very precise, you know, in that area. I may have that mixed up also. But also, there's also negative effects to using those, right? You get pre-ringing, <clears throat> which you don't want. And I think that may be more more obvious uh, in certain frequencies. So they kind of break it up so that they use the most, the best use of the processing power and the least unwanted effects from both. So I don't know. I need to go back and read the paper, but uh, it's all there. What else? Make sure to check out our audio-only version of the podcast at anchor.fm forward slash daily hi-fi, or just go to your favorite podcasting service and search for daily hi-fi.